okay so this is going to be the first video in a very long series of videos about ray tracing <coughs> so this is my first ever video done using screen capturing and a microphone so bear with me so if you don't know what ray tracing is basically the concept is the backwards implementation of how real light works with our eyes so in the real world uh, lights give off photons and they interact with objects changing their wavelength and ultimately hitting our retinas and our eyes so that we can create an image now what we want to do obviously that would be a brute force method which is not efficient at all so what we want to do is for every pixel on the screen we want to shoot a ray and see how that ray interacts with the objects the lights and the scene and depending on those interactions calculate a particular color so for this episode the very first episode what we're going to do is set up our project and get a very basic loop the most basic aspect of ray tracing so you can probably see i have a project here called ray tracer that's my project that's currently in development but what we're going to do is start a new project and call it wherever you want this is my open software name that I'm giving for my ray tracer, Atlas. So you create your project, go into source, I'm going to create a new package. I'm just going to call it main. It's just main package where we're going to have our driver. So we're going to create a driver class. Now this is the class that's going to hold our main method. Now all my professors in college use the term driver for the class that holds the main method so that's just the convention that I stick to you can name this main you can name this whatever you want so I'm just gonna call driver so once that loads up let's just make our main method public static void main string args and then we're going to create a simple loop. Uh, actually, two for loops, nested for loops. And then we're going to comment and render. So, what this is saying is that we're going to initially start at the first row in our image. So, that would be y coordinate of zero. So, for that row, for every x value in that row from 0 to 640 we're going to render a pixel or color so this is just going to loop through our entire image so in this case our image is 640 by 480 it's just the standard that we use for now so what we can do is obviously since we're doing ray tracing it's important to be aware of the time that it takes to complete certain tasks. So we're going to time this loop and then print out the time of execution. So loop time, just call it that, and minus start. And then this is a nanosecond, so one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So we can just run this real quick. <coughs> so loop time of is that 10 milliseconds? Okay, so we can do some quick optimizations here. So let's do an i equals 40. This way we can change it more easily. And what's actually a common practice we could do is something like this to give your aspect ratio 16 by 9 which is common but if you want to change the ratios so you don't have to so we're going to substitute this with height this with width okay so the basics of our ray tracer is that we want to create an image with various colors embedded in that image so how we're how are we going to do that we're going to do that right first creating a file, let's call this file image, it's a new file, and then call it what you want, I'll just call it image.png, 
PNG. So that's the type of the file you're making. It's a PNG file. And we need a buffered image. I like to call this buffer because it holds all of our data. And we want a new buffered image uh, with height and then the type. In this case, RGB. We don't need alpha because <clears throat> when you do ray tracing, you create your own alpha. So we'll just import that. Got our imports. Everything looks good. So what we could do is buffer dot set RGB. So this will set the color at that pixel position. So X Y. And let's just choose a random value. Let's see a thousand. I think that's blue. This is an integer value, by the way. And then once that's done, we can do image IO dot right. And this takes in. Let's see our buffer. And this is the type PNG, and then the file we're writing to. And this needs a try catch. We'll just catch any old exception. Don't really care. Uh, let's print out. Could not write image. Just exit. So let's run this and let's clean this up a little bit. Run this and see what happens. So we got a loop time of 600 milliseconds, 0.6 seconds. So we're going to refresh this and see what happens. So we got an image right here. Click on that image and it displays 640 by 480. So what we do just to test to see that this is working correctly is create a random number generator. And we can import this. And then instead we can use the random value. So let's try this and Let's do 1600 by 900. That's the resolution of my monitor. So we'll see what happens there. And click our image. Open. And there's our noise image. It's just random color values. Interesting to note that that took much longer because of uh, the method call in the random class so always be aware of the time of execution and efficiency so i think that's going to be it for this first episode we just created a very simple image to write to the most basic functionality of a ray tracer it's looping through and this will eventually be calculations with rays against objects in our scene, lights, etc. So I think that's it. End it there.